Good morning. We are back at it again. More Wireshark. More Wireshark. We're going to concentrate on some new stuff today uh, as we progress, progress, as we progress through our uh, through our Wireshark studies. Uh, we're going to look at ICMP first, right? So ICMP, also known as ping, also known as trace route, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, you might get some capture the flag uh, questions concerning ICMP, and you may be thinking to yourself, okay, uh, where can I look and where can I find these answers to these types of questions. Well, uh, let's start with the first one. Where do I find where do I find the payload for my ICMP? Yes, the payload. Now the payload will be different depending on the ICMP. And so something to be aware of. Okay. So if you have such a question, first thing we want to do uh, is we want to look at ICMP. And we can do that. Now mine's pretty easy because I have ICMP right at the get-go, but let's assume that you didn't. Let's see, assume you didn't. You can do ICMP just like that, and it will literally filter ICMP for you. Pretty nice, right? Uh, a lot of times you might see uh, something that says ICMP dot type dot uh, equal equals, and then something associated with that. Uh, but for our, for us today, all we're going to do is ICMP, okay? Uh, and so what we want to do to find that payload is very simple. We're going to go to the Internet Control Message Protocol right here. We're going to scroll down and then see this data. This data right here, see where it says data? There you go, that's the ICMP payload right there. Uh, and if I get payload and it asks me for the hexadecimal attribute to it, it's literally highlighted right here, so I can look at it. And depending on what it wants from you, sometimes it'll want this entire thing. And you know, let's type in 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all the way to 37, right? Sometimes it'll be, uh, just be a repeating number, and in which case it may just ask you for the repeating number. Sometimes, it'll ask you for uh, the fifth or the sixth one, and you just have to count for it, right? Now, remember, there's a difference between base 10 system and a hexadecimal system. So if I'm utilizing a hexadecimal system, I'm going to you probably have a 0x in front of it. Not all the time, it depends on the developers for that CTF, uh, but in this case, let's say that it asked me, you know, what the third data payload or what the third payload was within my within my ICMB request and maybe it says in the ninth or in the eighth uh, packet. So I bring up the eighth packet. It's not gonna be nice like this where it's just one through nine, uh, 10 like I've got it right here. Uh, you'd really have to count to the eighth ICMP packet and then I'd have to find the data and then I'd be like, okay, we'll find the, the eighth payload and I would count, okay, well in this case it's pretty simple, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I would know it's 17 and then I input 17 in the capture flag and it's like, nope, that's not the right answer. Uh, and that's because you need to put the hexadecimal format in there, which is zero X one seven. So be aware of that, right? I've run into the problems with that in the past where where students are like, oh, well it's 17. No, it's, it's not, it's not 17, it's OX. 17 because of the hexadecimal format to it and they specifically asked for that hexadecimal format so be aware of that okay all right let's move on to our next question now let's assume that it wants the hex value or the identifier for icmp we would need to go well we would need to drop this up right we need to find the actual protocol for icmp so i'd look for that internet protocol version 4 and I'd scroll down until I found the protocol type, which is right here, protocol ICMP. In this case, it's one, pretty typical. Uh, and then I just need to find it. And if I go over there, you can see it's outlined at zero one on this particular packet. Good to verify, good to verify zero one. And then of course, hexadecimal format has that zero X in front of it if I wanted to. So decimal format zero one, hexadecimal format zero X zero one would give us that. Uh, yeah, and so that's that's how we would find the protocol for ICMP um, going forward. Now, when you're looking at ICMP, there's different types of, well, there's different types of packets being sent. There could be an echo request, or there could be a ping. Um, there could be other ones as well. But let's say that we wanted to find out exactly what type it is. Normally, it'll have it right here. For instance, I know it's a ping. Right, but sometimes it'll be like, okay, well, that's nice. It's it's a ping, but what is the value for that? And to under, find, understand or find that, I need to go back into the Internet Control Message Protocol right there, uh, and it'll be something like, well, what's the type? In this case, we could see it's a type zero, uh, and it tells me it's an echo ping reply in this particular case because if we look at this, it's replying to 
the initial uh, echo or the next P request because it's coming from 102. And obviously because it's reply, that means that the client sent it to the machine, to the server, and the server or the other client is responding back to it. So if I went back up to say, just the next one over, because we can see eight is the reply right here with the arrows, and I went up to number seven, we can see now it changed to a type eight because this is an echo ping request. So we can see the differences between that, right? We have a zero and an eight. And so we need to understand the differences of there, and then that might be a question. And then of course, I can find the hexadecimal value to both right here. In this case, it's a zero, zero. Uh, I can find that, and if I go up to number seven, it's a zero eight. So I do want to point out as well that the, you know, the type matches, matches the uh, hexadecimal value, and that's where we get that from. We can also find the IP header checksum in this field as well. So well, not in this specific field, but uh, let's assume that I wanted to find the IP uh, header checksum. Now you got to remember the header checksum verifies the integrity of the packet being sent. So I can scroll up here a little bit, and from here, I just go back into Internet Protocol version 4, and I'm literally looking for the header checksum right there. In this case, it's 0x8a5d. The validation on this one is disabled, so it may ask you if it's disabled or not. Uh, in this case, it's disabled. And again, if we wanted that, that, um, that non-hexadecimal format, because it provides us in hexadecimal, which would be 0x, but if we drop the 0x, it's, not, it's no longer in hexadecimal format, right? So remember that. So as we go through that 0x, I want you to get used to that one. I haven't really bashed on that that much, uh, but it is something that you need to be uh, aware of, right? So that's how we check the header checksum right there is uh, finding that. And remember, this verifies whether or not there's integrity in the packet. It does error checking is really what it's there for, okay? Now that was for the IP, but what about the ICMP? Well, it's the same thing. If I go down to the checksum right here, we can see the ICMP header checksum is 75C1 and the hexadecimal format 0x75C1. And we can see that it's correct, okay? Very much, very much central. We're gonna be concentrating on these two fields today. Now, if you remember, we sorted by ICMP. And by sorting by ICMP, we can actually see the total number of packets associated with this entire uh, PCAP file, but we can also see what the number is displayed and the percentage amount to it. And if you don't remember, don't worry, I'm gonna show you where that's at. Uh, I like to revisit these topics as we go through, just so that you don't have to go back through again and look for it. But if you remember, I've got only 10 packets here. We know that we have 259 packets available, and instead of doing the math, I can just look down here and it'll tell me. So I've displayed 10, that's my total ICMP, and my percentage at 3.9%, if you forget, okay? So we've identified the number of packets associated with ICMP. So if I've got like a ton of them, let's say that I've got like 300 different ones and I don't wanna go through and count them, because remember, they're usually not gonna be like this, right? They're usually not gonna say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, I just knew I was doing ICMP today, so I did a new PCAP for this. Remember that if I wanted to, I could look at the bottom right-hand side and it'll tell me all that information. So remember, work smarter, not harder. Uh, I saw at one CTF event, somebody was literally counting each packet and man, if you miss one, uh, your answer will be off. So be aware of that. Now you may at one point be asked the question, what's the time to live? Uh, first, I think it's important to understand what time to live is. Time to live was this idea that uh, what we had a problem with was switches being cabled back into each other. and so. Uh, we found that instead of having ping requests just constantly run amok in our system, because if you imagine uh, where I've got loops inside my system, or maybe I'm getting a lot of ICMP requests in there, uh, I want each packet to have a defined number of times that it will hit a physical device before it just drops, right? Because otherwise, I'm going to have some problems on my network, I'm going to have some congestion. And it's not like it was today back in those times, right? Traffic was important and we wanted to be very efficient about it. And so we have this time to live. And uh, with time to live is every device that it hits, every IP address that it hits, it takes off one segment of that time to live. And so it cleans up our network now, it provides a little bit more efficiency for our network. Now we can modify that TTL, but how do I find it on Wireshark? Well, it's very simple, believe it or not. Uh, it's right here, right? So we have our time to live, our internet protocol version. And we can see with this specific packet, our time to live is 64. 
and our hexadecimal value associated with it would be 0x40 uh, for this specific case in this packet, all right? So that's time to live. Now, the next one gets a little bit tricky because we have to mess with the settings. Uh, and you may be asked a question with the fact that it's going, okay, well, you threw out this ICMP request out there to this website. Do we know what website it is based on ICMP? Now, we showed this before where you went through and you could find the website associated with it under uh, internet protocol, if you remember that, right? And we can see here, that no matter what I do, I can't identify the actual website with this. And that's because we have to change the setting. So to change the setting to find out the IP address or the actual website associated with this, we need to go through and make some adjustments to our actual preferences. Uh, I'm gonna go to edit. From edit, I'm gonna go down to preferences. And then from preferences, it'll say name resolution right here. And then I can resolve network IP addresses right there. Click on that, press okay. And now we can see that the associated name, the DNS recognizes that the goat.com. Uh, and so we can find that out within it. Uh, I've seen many, many people, especially during a CTF event where they go through and they're just, they're just like, it's impossible. I cannot find it. Of course you can't find it. You didn't have your system set up correctly. Uh, so we're gonna change it back just because uh, I don't like having it that way, right? Now, if I wanted to, I could leave it there. And I want to point out, right, I have the GOAT and it's right there, destination address. And maybe I'll just keep it. I'll keep it. Uh, I don't like to keep it because I've got a lot of students that come in and then it's like, well, why does yours show that? And mine doesn't. So, uh, but one setting we probably should have set up right at the get go. We can also do some other settings. If I go into preferences, the name resolution, I can resolve transport names. I don't want to do that. Uh, I use custom list of DNS servers for name resolution. If I wanted to do that, I could. Uh, all of this is capable. I can go through and do expert and add some fields there if I wanted to. There's a lot of stuff that we could do in here uh, that I would implore you not to mess with unless you know what you're doing or at least you studied about it, right? Don't know in there willy-nilly. Uh, you, may, you may accidentally hurt yourself more than what you should. All right, let's assume that uh, my, my CTF was asking me something about security levels, right? Uh, and so I need to find the security level associated with an ICMP. How would I find that? Well, the first thing I need to do is not scroll over here, which is where most people would go through. We actually need to go under Analyze. From Analyze, we're gonna drop down to Expert Information. From Expert Information, we should see our severity, and then our summary, the group, the protocol, and the count. Now, our severity can be a chat, it could be a note, it could be a warning, it could be an error, or it could actually be a critical. Um, I think there's a couple more on there. I'm, I, it's been a while but your severity will be listed right here associated with the specific packet that you're clicking on. And so if you click packets, you need to go back through and reanalyze it and be aware of that, right? And then go through it. Uh, for me personally, I don't have any because these are all resolved, which means there's no points in there. It's not gonna tell me anything. Uh, but if you get that question, you now know where to look. And that's, that's the important part. And about data length within your, within your uh, sub item, right? And I wanna caution you with this one. So a lot of times we see total length under IC, or uh, excuse me, internet protocol version four, and we go through and we go, oh, okay, it's the, it's the total length right there, it's 84. But if it's referring to the ICMP, that's not what we're looking for. What we're actually looking for is down here, I need to go down to the data. Where's the data? There it is, under data. And that will give me the actual length for the ICMP, because I'm looking for the actual ICMP not for the ice, uh, not for the entire packet. And so in this case, our length is 40 bytes. All right, well that covers, uh, the, that covers ICMP. I feel like we hit everything that we wanted to. I do wanna point out when we're going through ICMP and we're going through packets that we can sort by ICMP, right? We wanna make sure that we're sorting uh, specifically, right? And you may see different ICMP associated with it. Uh, you may see other things. Now, if I wanna change this back, right? Because I'm not a big fan of the goat.com. Uh, I like the IP addresses, especially if I'm doing local network. Remember, you can always go into uh, the editor, go down to preferences, and from preferences, just go down to name resolution, and you can click that off uh, if you need to, right? So be associated with that. I prefer the source and destination sometimes. Sometimes I prefer the other one. Uh, it's a button I would get used to uh, when it comes down to that. All right. Okay. 
Uh, I hope this was educational. I hope that you learned something from a very quick video today. Not too bad. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tag this for ICMP because I feel like this one was a good one. Uh, until next week, we'll see you later. Have a good one.